Hi and welcome to this old house. You may be asking yourself, what's a Murphy bar? Well, it's a liquor cabinet that mounts on an exterior wall with a drop-down door that makes for a neat and sturdy work surface. Perfect for mixing drinks and slicing limes. And it's made of naturally rot-resistant cedar, so it just so happens to be safe for food handling as well. We used what's known as clear cedar on this project, but you could save a few bucks by swapping in knotty cedar if you like. Check out the cut list on this webpage to line up your materials. To start building, use a miter saw to cross-cut all the pieces except for the door slats. While you're at it, cut four L-shaped blocks from scrap to help you clamp the box together. Now, lay out the pieces of the box. Glue the bottom piece to the side pieces, and use the clamping box to hold the corners square. Next, glue and clamp the center divider in place. Here, you can use a square to get it straight. Then you want to drill pilot holes with a countersink bit and screw the pieces together. Now, prop the entire assembly up on one by blocks to create the overhang for the top. It's a little wider than the sides. Use your corner blocks here again and glue and clamp the top piece in place. Then you just want to countersink pilot holes and screw it down. Next, measure and mark the location for the shelf cleats, halfway up the right hand compartment. Glue the cleats, tack them in place, and then install the shelf. Time to build the roof. Use a bevel gauge to mark 12 degree angles at the corners of the gable ends. Gang the two pieces together and clamp them down. Now, cut both pieces at the same time and you end up with two identical pieces. Hang on to the sections you cut off for now. Next, you want to mark 12 degree angles on the edges of the roof boards where they meet at the peak. Loosen the shoe of the circular saw, match the blade to that angle, and then tighten it back up. Now make the bevel cross cuts. Once you're done with both pieces, check to see that the roof pieces fit together with the gable ends. To install the roof, stand the box upright. Glue the bottom edge of one gable end and use the cutoff section to clamp it in place. Drill pilot holes from inside the box with your countersink bit, then screw the piece in place. Install the other gable end just the same way. Then for the roof pieces, glue them down and use a brad nailer to tack them in place. Now you can install the back. Lay the box face down, then start from the bottom arranging slats. Use spacers, something like large paint stirrers, to set the gap between slats. The screws would be overkill here, so just tack these slats in place, all except for the top one. That's because the top slat doubles as the French cleat to mount the box on the wall. To make the cleat, mark a 45 on the end of the board, right through the center line. Transfer that line to the face of the board. Then, screw the board down to your work surface, set your blade to 45 degrees, and rip the board along its entire length. What you end up with is two halves with matching bevels. One will go on the wall. Install the other one as the top slat, beveled down and facing into the box. Countersink pilot holes and secure it with screws. Next up is the door frame. It's made of five quarter boards to give you a little more strength than plain old one by fours. The first step is to clamp the styles on the edge of the table. Chuck a three quarter inch straight bit in your router and set the fence to keep the cut at that width. Start shallow and make several passes until the rabbit is three eighths of an inch deep. Now, the frame is held together with dowels. To drill holes for them, clamp a doweling jig to the style, flush with the outside edge, and make a pair of holes three quarter of an inch deep at each end of each style. Use the jig to make a complementary pair of holes on the inside edges of the rails at each end. To assemble the door, apply glue to one end of the dowels and insert them into the rails. Then, glue the styles and fit them into place. Use bar clamps to hold the frame together, and then check it for square. With the frame built, you can measure it and cut the slats to fit. Once they're cut to length, clamp all four of them together and route both ends so that they fit into the door frame. To finish the door, lay the slats into the frame using spacers to keep the gaps even. Countersink two pilot holes at each end of each slat and use brass screws to secure them. The next step is to install the hinges. Screw them in place and then install rings for the chain. But before you cut the chain to length, use a raptor square to make sure that length will hold the door flat. Now to mount the bar, level the French cleat on the wall and drive a screw into each end. Use shims to bring the face of the cleat plumb and also to keep it from trapping moisture against the siding. Then just use 3 inch deck screws to hold the cleat in place. Now for the slick part. Simply slide the bar onto the cleat and you're done. Nice thing about this is you can easily remove it at the end of the season to store it if you like. But the first order of business is to decide what to serve at your first patio party.